So a metal detector is a very interesting device because it's capable of sensing the presence of metal even if it's buried underground or concealed in some other way. And it works on pretty much any metal out there, whether it's steel or aluminium or copper or even gold. But of course that could also be a disadvantage because it can mean that you could be detecting a valuable gold coin or just an old screw. But in this video we're going to take a look at how a metal detector actually works. Now in most metal detectors there are two coils. One of them is the transmitter coil, the other one is the receiver coil. Now the transmitter is wired up to a signal generator as you can see and the receiver is wired up to the actual uh, detector circuit or receiver circuit whatever you want to call it. Now when you turn on the metal detector the signal generator is going to send an alternating current through the transmitter coil. As a result of that, it's going to produce an alternating magnetic field. Now, because the receiver coil is located right next to it, it's obviously going to pick up that magnetic field and therefore it's going to be registered by the detector. So the detector is going to see a signal that looks kind of like this. Right, which is the signal being produced by the transmitter coil, by the signal generator. So now let's say that a piece of metal approaches this situation. I just got a, like a square piece of metal coming in. Or maybe you know, the situation is actually approaching the piece of metal, right? Depending on what kind of thing this is. If it's like an airport security thing, then it's the person walking in with the piece of metal if it's a treasure hunting metal detector, then it's the detector approaching the metal. You get the point. So what's going to happen now is the alternating magnetic field being produced by our transmitter coil is going to induce some electric current inside that piece of metal, which is called eddy current. The interesting thing about that is that this electric current inside that metal is going to produce its own magnetic field. Just like the current being produced by the signal generator over here produces that field around the coil, the current induced in the piece of metal also produces its own magnetic field. So the piece of metal becomes very slightly magnetic of its own. Even if it's made out of material that is normally speaking not magnetic, so something like copper or aluminium or even gold. The interesting thing is that that field produced by the piece of metal is going to interfere with the original field from our transmitter coil. So it's going to make the field from our transmitter coil weaker. So the signal being sensed by this detector is going to be smaller. So the detector is going to notice that. It's going to notice that the intensity of the magnetic field decreased. And that's how it knows that there is a piece of metal right there. So that's the basic principle of how a metal detector works, or at least how a very common type of it works, because there are some other types of metal detector that we're not going to bother talking about in this video. So of course I can draw this stuff on a whiteboard, I could probably make some kind of animation of it, but the best way to actually understand how this works is to actually see it in practice. So I've built a little test setup, I've built a very simple metal detector over there that, we're going to show, that I'm going to show you so that you can actually see how this works in real life. So let's just go over there and, and just fire up the equipment, shall we? Okay, so believe it or not, but this is actually a fully functional metal detector. So let me explain how it works, right? So over here we've got my phone acting as a uh, signal generator. So this is going to produce the signal that we're going to feed into our transmitter coil eventually. But we don't feed the signal directly into the transmitter coil because the signal from my phone is a little bit too weak. So it first goes through this audio amplifier right here, which amplifies the signal and then sends it into our transmitter coil. The receiver coil is this smaller coil over here, and that one is connected through this cable to an oscilloscope over here, which is revealing what the receiver coil is picking up. So right now you can see it's picking up the signal being put out by our transmitter coil. So if all goes to plan, if I take a piece of metal and I bring it close to these two coils, we should see the signal on the oscilloscope 
changing. So right here I've got a piece of aluminium which I'm now going to bring close to these two coils. And you can clearly see if you look on the scope screen you can see it changing. There you go. The closer I get the piece of metal to the coils the weaker the signal gets. That is fantastic right there. It's actually working, right? I mean, I've seen this a hundred times at this point, but it's still great to see that this actually works. So that is how we can detect a piece of metal like this. Now, of course, the detection range is quite bad because it's not a very well-optimized metal detector, but it shows the principle quite well. Now, what's also quite interesting is that the how well this works actually depends on the, the type of metal that you're trying to detect because aluminium conducts electricity really well. So remember those eddy currents that we talked about? Quite a large eddy current will develop in this aluminium because it's a very good conductor. So it gives quite a strong response on our scope as you can see. But if I take a material that doesn't conduct so well, like let's say a slab of steel, steel doesn't conduct nearly as well as aluminium. So you can see we've got a much bigger piece of steel than, than the piece of aluminium, right? So in theory you'd expect the response to be stronger, but you can see it isn't. In fact it might be a bit weaker. So this piece of steel, even though it's much bigger and heavier, is actually harder to detect because it doesn't conduct as well as the piece of aluminium. So the better the conductivity of the material the easier it is to detect it with a method like this. So that is why this type of metal detector is very suitable for detecting gold, because gold has very good electrical conductivity, so it can be detected by this setup really well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a piece of solid gold to actually test it out. Um, if you do have a piece of solid gold, please send it to me uh, in the mail, and then we can have a go at it. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and of course, thank you for watching.